everyone, this is Katie here again, and I'll be leading you through the fourth video in our Archigen Intelligence series. In this video, I'll show you how to create a cube in TM1 and fill it with some sample data. This video builds on the previous ones, so be sure to watch those if you find yourself getting lost here, or if you need some help setting up TM1. In the last video, I showed you how to create a dimension for employees from a sample file. The employees are organized by department. I have another file here which lists employees' salaries for the year 2012. This file is comma delimited with a header line indicating the purpose of each entry. So how can we put all this data into TM1? The answer is by creating a cube. Cubes are composed of dimensions. Each combination of elements from the different dimensions forms an intersection in the cube. Cubes must have at least two dimensions in them. So before I can bring in the data, we have to make at least one more dimension. I'm going to actually make two. I'm going to make one for the year and one for the measures. First, I'll make the year dimension. I'll add the elements 2012 and 2013. Then I'll click OK to save the dimension and call it year. The next dimension I'm going to make is called measures. Generally, all cubes should have a measures dimension. It is not required, but it is good practice. For now, it will just have one element called salary. Now we're ready to create the cube. Right click on cubes and click create new cube. Now you can choose which dimensions to add. In this case, we'll be adding all three. The order of the dimensions is important. You will always have to reference cube data in the order of the dimensions that you choose here. You can change the physical order of the dimensions in memory to optimize the cube later, but the way it is presented will always remain the same. Generally, you want to go from the broadest dimensions with the least number of elements to the most detailed with a large number of elements. The measures dimension should always be last. Here, I've called the cube employee actuals. Now let's look it up to see what it looks like. Hit recalculate to refresh the values, which are all at zero at this point. You can see the three dimensions with employee and measures on the axes. The year is up above, which means that the element must be selected. Now we need to actually put data in the cube. So click X to exit the cube and don't save the view. A view is just a certain way of viewing the cube. We'll go into more detail on this in a later lesson. Now go to create a new process. Select text data source and browse to the location of the file with sample salaries data. You can find this file on our website at the link in the video description if you'd like to follow along more closely in this exercise. This file has one title record. Let's preview it. This looks pretty good as it has the three values we expected. Let's now go to the variables tab. I'm going to rename the variables, adding a V to the beginning of their name. This makes it easier when you get into sophisticated coding later on and it's a good habit to get into. The year and the employee name are both string variables because they are the names of the elements. However, the salary is numeric because this value is a number that is going into the cube. Likewise, the first two can be changed to element under contents and the salary should be changed to data. Next, go to the Maps tab. Here, we need to select Update Cube since we already created it. Then in the drop-down, select the Employee's Actual Cube. Store values is the correct option here. Accumulate values is for if more than one entry is going to a particular intersection in the cube, then it adds them together. Next, we'll go to the Dimensions tab. A message pops up telling you that the number of dimensions in the cube doesn't match the number of variables you declare to be elements. Let's go back to the Variables tab to investigate. So let's check the cube and look at the dimensions. So you can see the cube has three dimensions and we've only declared two. We are missing the measures dimension, which is composed of just one element called salary. 
So let's add a new variable. Click New Variable. Call it V Measure. Hit Enter and a box will pop up where you can put in a formula. It already has V Measure equals, so below it type in salary in single quotes, followed by a semicolon. Click Evaluate and it should show the value salary. What this function does is define the vMeasure variable to be salary for every entry in the file that it scans. It is the equivalent of adding a new column to the file that has the value salary in every row. So now change it to a string value and an element. Now you can go back to the Dimensions tab on the Maps tab. Simply select the dimension that corresponds to the variables. The action defaults to as is, which is what we want. We don't want to actually alter the dimension itself. Now, on the Advanced tab, you have to be sure to click on each tab to make sure that it generates the code. After that, you can save the process. Be sure to name it something that makes sense. I called this process Load Data Cube Employee Actuals. Then click on the blue arrow to run the process. Hopefully you get a message saying it completed successfully. Now let's open up the cube and see if the salary data is in there. Click Recalculate to refresh the values. Looks like it worked! You can see that the values from the file are now in the cube. I'm going to expand out the employee dimension so you can see all the values. You can see that the individual employee salaries roll up to the department level and the departments roll up to the total company. Now let's drag the year dimension down and see what that looks like. So you can see that all the values went to the 2012 element in the year dimension. And that's it! Now you know how to create a cube and fill it with data. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to stay tuned for our next one where we'll show you how to enter product and sales information into TM1. Thanks for watching!